This is a 2020 Fante Peugeot Australia 42 foot catamaran from Navigar Yachting down here in the British Virgin Islands and I'm gonna give you a tour. We sailed this boat for a week down in the BVI and got to know her well. Both the common and the cabin areas felt way larger than I would expect for a 42 foot boat. We put her through her paces and sailed her in all different types of conditions. And I feel she's a great compromise between comfort and performance. In this video, I'm going to give you an in-depth tour and my opinion about the Fountain Peugeot Australia 42. So with all these tours, I like to start on the bow and just work our way back. Uh, so there's the trampoline. Uh, it's only 42 foot, so a lot of cats have like a split down the middle. This one doesn't, so it's nice for hanging out. And it does have a decent amount of uh, like seating area for hanging out out here. The uh, generator lives under this side, uh, and it is fairly quiet. Uh, like when we're sailing, you can't hear it at all. When we're at anchor, you can barely hear it. So the soundproofing's on is pretty good, and it'll power the whole boat, all the air conditioners and everything. And then. On this side over here is the uh, chain locker for putting out the anchor and everything. We only used it one time anchoring for just a little bit, uh, like at White Bay. The rest, of, everywhere here has mooring, so it's easy to catch a mooring. And I do like how when you put the chain out here, you can actually connect the bridle right in this little uh, chain locker compartment so that you don't have to like try to hook it on to the train to chain out that way, just a little more secure. One thing uh, under this forward compartment as well is the water tanks. It actually has 700 liters. So it's like, uh, you know, nearly 200 gallons of water, which is nice because uh, it does not have a water maker. That's the one downside on this boat. There's no water maker. So we had to stop and get water one time, but we only do it one time during the week. And so we have plenty of water now. Uh, so it is, it, 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 it's nice having the big water tanks. Four peaks here on each one. It's just storage, lots of space. Uh, so that's where you put your fenders or, you know, if your trash is piling up, whatever goes in here, you got your bow seats up there. Uh, pretty standard. I do like that it's not a self-tacking rig. Uh, so it is a, a Genoa that goes back past the mast so you get a little more performance. That's kind of the, the thing I've always thought about Fountain Peugeot's is great boats. Uh, they're a little more performance oriented rather than like Lagoon, which is just a big tank and supposed to be nice and comfortable. This has a little bit more stuff to make it more performance uh, based. Back here at the mast, um, everything is controlled from the cockpit. So you don't really have to come up here and do much. Uh, although we did have problems with uh, putting the sail down, uh, it just didn't want to drop down. So maybe the track needs to be lubed up or something. We'd have to come and get the boat hook and actually pull down on the uh, on the sail to get it to come down. But uh, so with that, let's go back and look at the cock or the helm station. So this is the helm station. Uh, it's kind of like uh, the Fountain Bajo's standard thing. They've kind of a slightly raised helm station so that you can kind of be a part of the action down there, but still manage the boat and do everything up here. Uh, so you control all the sails right here, which is nice because it's nice you can do everything from one spot, but there's not enough space for two people to work. So it is kind of annoying when you're going to tack. So you have to like change the sheets over or you got to, if you're going to jibe, like we did one time, you know, we had to jibe. So we had to pull in the main sheet and then tack the head sail through. So right. only one person can do stuff at a time, but it is, you know, somebody can be driving the boat from the back here and somebody else can be doing the handling the sails. The, all your reefing lines come through here. Your main comes through here. Your jib sheets come on each side. It does have one powered winch this side right here, which uh, you can actually run back to the furling line and uh, yeah and you control your travelers and main sheet and everything here so it's uh, pretty well okay on that uh, and then back here at the helm station nice big Garmin chart plotter it's all Garmin stuff I do like uh, the instruments they put on this boat it is pretty nice and the autopilot you got a multifunction display for your wind and all that you have a depth gauge your autopilot gauge and all that uh, the only thing i don't like on this boat is the engine controls are behind the wheel so like if you have the autopilot engaged and you want to do something with the engines you really have to disengage the autopilot so you can hold the wheel steady to turn the engine on and off uh, and then unlike the last boat we had it actually has a, a, a radio here at the helm station as well which last time it was down below it was like okay it's not very useful but uh, anyway coming up over here um, the 42 I mean it has this sun pads here for hanging out 
the 45 and bigger on the Fontaine Peugeots I like a little better because you have a full like seating area here uh, instead of just a lounge. So you have a step up and you have some seating and a table and all that. The 42 it's okay, it's just slightly smaller so you don't get that extra space. And so that's it for the helm station. We'll take you down uh, to the cockpit and then inside. So this is the cockpit area. Uh, we'll just start with the back and kind of move inwards. Uh, the davit system here, not a huge fan of it. I mean, it's okay, but like, uh, I mean, just put a powered winch back here. So the two gripes I have on this boat, no water maker, and that that winch is not powered. If that winch was powered, it'd be so much easier to pull this dinghy up. As it is, you gotta sit there and grind. I mean, whatever it is, but it is first world problems, right? Uh, but it is a nice, comfortable cockpit. Uh, for a 42 foot boat, it feels pretty big back here. Um, so it is a nice uh, space. The only thing I would say is I wish this table was either had like, a, uh, maybe it was smaller so you get in easier or had two smaller tables maybe with the leaf that folds over because basically nobody used this side of the, the table and the seating area because it's so hard to get back there. Uh, just a design thing, if you're having one built, that's what I would do is have two smaller tables with a leaf that you can put in the middle if you really want to make a dining. Uh, one of the unique features is it does have a built-in uh, propane uh, gas grill so that you can cook there. We didn't use it. We actually just, I mean, the barbecue tastes better, right? So we, we used the, the barbecue over there with charcoal. The two engines obviously live under the aft hatches. Again, uh, I, don't, I don't know how big they are, but we were at 2,300 RPM per side, we were able to do seven and a half knots on a boat my personal thing is I like to be able to do at least seven knots on the motor because that'll get you out of trouble if you're in it. Like if uh, you know heavy seas or uh, strong winds and you got a motor into it or you got current, if your boat's only capable of doing five knots, that's pretty, that's pretty limiting. Then you might only be doing two or three knots going into those uh, uh, circumstances. Nice and comfortable. It does have an outdoor, uh, like we used it as a beer fridge. Um, so that was nice. And then, uh, you know, it, it, the charter company gave us a cooler to use too. It does have three refrigerators on here, so one inside and then a drawer system for the, uh, for the uh, it has a refrigerator and a freezer and then an outside fridge. It's amazing having that much uh, refrigeration. Downside is it uses a lot of power. So there's no solar on this boat. Um, and uh, so, you know, it's kind of annoying having to run the generator, um, you know, three or four or five hours a day just to, just to charge the batteries. Um, but with that, we'll move inside the uh, salon. Uh, coming inside the salon and the galley, sorry it's so messy, but we've been living on this thing for a week and uh, we're trying to get packed and get off the boat. Uh, I like to do these tours uh, at the end of the week so I really know the boat better rather than when I first get on it. Of course, when we get on the boat, it's pristine and clean and all that, but you know, I don't know the boat very well. But here we are in the salon uh, galley. Uh, kind of a U-shaped galley, so there's lots of counter space actually, and uh, which is nice. The only downside is if somebody's cooking or doing something here, you, it's hard to access the refrigerator. Uh, is what it is. I mean, you know, it's a small, it's a 42 foot boat, so you make compromises with things like that when you're in a smaller boat. But uh, you know, gas cooktop, oven, um, and then double sink. Uh, it was pretty comfortable. Lots of storage underneath here, um, and then you know, you got all your. Uh, you know, cups and plates and bowls and all that stuff here. And then, um, you know, decent amount of ventilation uh, with this guy here for the cooking, for the heat to go up. And then you have the two forward windows. I wish there was, the windows were a little bigger and forward to get more airflow, but it's okay because these doors come all the way open right here, which is nice. So you can be cooking or doing something and still part of the activity outside. And then that door opens on the side over there. Moving across to the other side of the galley. Uh, here you just have like your cupboard, right? For all your, in your microwave. So uh, for your food preps and all that. And then this is the other inside refrigerator. So a refrigerator on top and a freezer down below. Uh, so, uh, you know, lots of refrigeration at a cost of uh, you know, power. Uh, one thing that is kind of cool too, uh, Fountain Peugeot does it all in all these, is like your trash, you just put your trash bag underneath here, you drop your trash straight in, straight in so it kind of stays out of the way. On this side of the salon, um, actually, I mean, I kind of like that this has a leaf that you can move in and out and all that so that, you know, we just, to keep, just keep stuff from sliding, sliding around, we open this, but there's plenty of space for a couple people to work or eat or something like that. So I do like the space here. Nice wraparound windows with tint on them so it doesn't get too hot in here. I mean, we, we never really had to use the air conditioner. I mean, it was like 78, 79 during the day and 72 at night. It was pretty nice. Coming on the other side over here is your chart table. Nobody used paper charts anymore. I don't know why, why they even 
bother putting these here, but you could if you wanted to, and it would be not a bad idea if you're cruising, is you'd put another chart plotter repeater here and an autopilot control. That way you can be in here if it's raining cats and dogs rather than be up there wet sitting at the helm. Um, and then on this side, you have all your uh, electrical controls and your generator controls. But uh, so it was pretty comfortable boat. For 42 feet, it feels way bigger. Even in the cabins, you'll see in a minute. The cabins, even the forward cabin on a 42 foot boat is generally kind of small. This one's not bad. So let's head down there and uh, take a look at the cabins. We'll just do one side because they're mirror images of each other. So coming down, uh, not bad. I didn't hit my head once, which I've done on a cab ran. So we'll turn and go to the forward cabin first and then the uh, aft cabin. So come on down. The forward cabin does have a separate hanging locker here. It's, you know, not in the room, but it gives you that extra space, which is nice. And then coming up here, you actually have, it's kind of a partial, I mean, walk around. It's not quite a queen size bed, but for two people on a forward cabin and a catamaran, that's a good size bed, honestly. And then you have more storage uh, above here. And then I think that might be it as far as like, uh, yeah. So you got bins on top and then storage there. And then under here, a little bit more storage. So, uh, you know, it's not bad. I, one thing I would recommend when you're chartering these boats, uh, bring a uh, collapsible bag. Don't bring a hard suitcase because the hard suitcase kind of gets in the way. Where do you put it? Especially if all the cabins are taken. You know, but if you do a collapsible one, you can collapse it and put it somewhere else. Uh, it does have its own head, which is quite nice. Uh, it's very large. And so both, there's four heads, four cabins. On a 42 footer, I don't know how they fit all this space in here, but it is really nice. It's nice and large. The only downside is it's a wet head. So the shower and the faucet and all that are the same thing, right? So you have to like lift the shower head up and put it up to take a shower, put it back down in the sink to do that. And it's a wet head. So like the whole floor, everything gets wet in there. Uh, downside, but you know, it is what it is on, you know, use of space. But uh, that's the forward cabin. So we'll turn around and get the aft cabin. Coming aft, I mean, it's pretty spacious here. I mean, it's almost a full queen size. I think it would be a full queen size bed if they didn't have these little cutouts for stepping up and getting into bed. Uh, so it is really nice, a lot of space here. Uh, a decent amount of airflow for being a back cabin uh, at the hatch there because it's kind of blocked by the helm station, but you get a decent amount of air. Uh, storage under the bed and storage and hanging lockers over on this side. And then its own head, which is basically, it, uh, it just mirrors that the forward head. And uh, yeah, but I mean, it's the same deal. It's pretty much, yeah, I mean, it's about the same size as that forward head, but not bad, pretty good. So that's it. The 42-foot uh, Fountain Bajo Estrella uh, named out of office with the Navigar fleet down here in the BBI. There's a link down below if you'd like to charter it. You can use code DOODLE for a couple hundred bucks off your charter if you'd like. And uh, if you do charter with them or anything with them, please tell them you saw it on Sailing Doodles. Helps me out too. Uh, but really enjoyed this boat for being a 42-foot boat. I think it just feels a lot bigger. So I'm pretty happy with, uh, with the design of this one. So uh, with that, we got to get packed up and head to the ferry we got to fly it out so thanks for watching click that like and subscribe button and we'll see you on the next video